It's the Prison News Podcast on Spreaker. Greetings and welcome to Prison News. I'm your host. First up, a Michiana mom says she has been repeatedly jailed for something she didn't do. The Kokusko County woman is breaking her silence that has surrounded her case for more than three years. Folks, you may remember this lady. She's been in and out of the media for quite some time. There's a picture of her sitting here. She's got a red sweater on, combed hair, makeup a little bit top and bottom, and an afghan on the back of a sofa. I return to text. What Jennifer says she won't do is take her now seven-year-old daughter to prison ever again to visit the girl's father. By her own count, that, quote, mother knows best mantra has cost her 32 days in jail. Jennifer says it was about this time last year that she then took her six-year-old daughter to meet the girl's father for the first time. The encounter occurred behind the walls of the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility as ordered by the court. When I took her there, she just clenched to me, had her arms around my neck. She wouldn't look at him or talk to him, Jennifer said. He tried to force her, you know, to like hug and kiss and stuff. And he was just sitting there making remarks that when he gets out of jail, you'll be with me. Jennifer called the experience terrifying and vowed not to visit again. She says that stance has landed her in contempt of court in the Kosciuszko County Jail on three separate occasions where she served a total of 32 days in jail. Man sentenced to killing of pastor. A San Diego man shot and killed a pastor over an eviction notice. He was sentenced this Monday to spend the rest of his life in prison. Paul David Carr was convicted of first-degree murder earlier this year in the shooting death of Pastor Craig Hodgson, 55 years old, a pastor at Grace Baptist Church in Jacumba. On Monday, Carr was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison, according to City News Service. Hodgson was killed when he handed Carr a notice to, of cleanup procedures concerning the old home on Old Highway 80. Jacumba is approximately 58 miles east of San Diego, just south of Center Interstate 8 in Boulevard, California. Now, folks, there's a picture of the pastor here, and he has the hair full all the way back, long sideburns, and he has a collar way out almost like Elvis. Uh, And if that's his wife next to him, she's very, very short. And we sure tragedy to hear about these things. Hey, up Alaska, Fairbanks, Alaska, Fairbanks man sentenced to four years in prison for two home burglaries. A Fairbanks man was sentenced to four years in prison Monday for burglarizing two homes near each other in the Gold Mine Trail neighborhood in November. Under the terms of a plea agreement, Kelly Thomas Keyes, 44 years old, pleaded guilty to felony counts of first-degree attempted burglary and weapons misconduct. Keyes and his accomplice, Robert S. Harrison, 30 years old, were arrested at the scene of one of the homes with a maroon sedan filled with jewelry and other stolen items from the homes. Most of this stolen property has been recovered. Now, Superior Court Judge Michael McConaughey, Judge McConaughey, accepted the plea deal with reluctance. Before handing down the sentence, McConaughey, Judge McConaughey, said he agreed with the case's prosecutor and one of the victims that the law should treat home invasion burglary as a violent crime. Judge McConaughey said, I will accept this agreement. I hear the victim, and I know he would like me to do something different. I can't say he's wrong in wanting me to do something different as a practical matter, but as a legal matter, the resolution, I think, fits, I think it fits within the law, he said. The judge went on to express his frustration with Alaska's year-old sentence reform law known as Senate Bill 91. The judge also expressed his frustration with a non-governmental organization that lobbied for the law's passage. Uh, SB 91 was largely driven by the Pew Charitable Trust. And I don't express an opinion uh, other than that when we deal with this particular type of charge, it's somewhat wanting and reflecting the realities of a home invasion, Judge McConaughey said. McConaughey previous gave Keyes' co-defendant, Harrison, a sentence of all suspended time at a hearing in January. Now, this is nice. 
the judge doesn't agree with the law, Harrison, it looks like, is going to beat the whole thing. I think, and he, I think he was a main perpetrator, it says here. Let's get back to the text. Now, here's Harrison now. That's number two guy. The allegations named Harrison as the main perpetrator because he'd previously worked as a, at a construction job at one of the homes that was burglarized, presumably getting the idea to burglarize it while he was working there. Huh, isn't that something how they can figure this out? That he probably got the idea to burglarize the home and was out working there. That's why when you guys have people working at your house, they want to use the bathroom, you tell them to go get a portable toilet. You don't ever let these guys in your house. Anyway, Keys will, uh, no, so he's gone. He, he's the, he's the, the uh, perpetrator, but he gets off scot-free. Keys, however, will serve the more serious jail sentence in Harrison. Now, it's always interesting to hear how these guys sing at sentencing when they're asked, do you want to say any last words? Here it is, baby. I'm going to read the last words. This is what he said. Keys, boy. Ah, there's really no excuse for what went on. Ah, I'm just very glad that nobody got hurt, that I didn't make a mistake that I, I can't change, he said. I hope you guys never have to go through this again. I know you feel violated. No, no, here, I'm going to stop right now. This guy's not saying he's sorry. He's saying, I hope I don't have to go through this again, which basically means if I reoffend. I hope I don't get caught. He also says, I hope that at some point in time, when? Some point in time, my actions, uh, whether you see them or not, can show you that I'm sorry. When asked by McConaughey, Keith said drugs played a role in his decision to break into the house. He hopes to stop using drugs. Now, early in the hearing, one of the burglary victims addressed the court. He said that he doesn't like the idea of, oh, the burglary victim says he keeps a Ruger pistol in his pocket. If he would have come home and caught this guy, it would have been a violent crime. Oh, boy, Alaska is truly a great frontier, a one, truly one of the last frontiers. Also, he told the judge that when these guys went through the house, they took important documents like his birth certificate, his death certificate, and they broke his rosary. The burglary victims, the burglary victim said, wow, I believe, he, yeah, I'm glad that guy didn't come home with a Ruger pistol when this was going on. Now, back to what actually happens when they get inside there again. Inmates return to Jamestown Prison after a riot. Remember this one? All five of the inmates who were hospitalized after being injured in a large riot. Now, this broke out Thursday at the Sierra Conservation Center, have since returned to the Jamestown Prison. What were they doing out at the Conservation Center? Nobody's saying. According to California Department of Corrections rehabilitation officials, Prison spokesman Lieutenant Robert Kelsey said officials haven't determined the case of the riot, but believe it wasn't planned. Now, now listen, these guys have got cameras, closed circuit cameras, video monitors. They've got sergeants. They've got corporals. They've got correctional officers. This guy's a lieutenant. And with all the, and they've got prison snitches on parole. With all this, Lieutenant Robert Kelsey can't determine the cause of the riot. Huh. Anyway... Also, they don't expect the riot was inspired by racial tensions. Oh, he doesn't know, but it certainly wasn't, don't suspicion it was inspired by racial tensions. Now, Kelsey said between 350 to 300 inmates, 380 inmates housed in Facility B, Bravo Yard, were involved. He said one man dislocated a shoulder and others were knocked unconscious. Now, folks, this next one's a little bit long. I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to lose some of you on this. A lot of times I read these long ones and people don't come back for about a week. They say, oh, I, don't want, I just want to hear a prison report, not a long deal. But this is fairly serious. It's entitled, it's called The Marshall Project, Can a General Conquer the Federal Prison System? And this has got so much mind control stuff in it. It starts out, the Federal Bureau of Prisons faces a sea of troubles, escalating medical costs, a prison population with little access to job training programs or computers, and institutional culture adverse to change. Now, Folks, is that a sea of troubles because the inmate can't have a computer? Is that really a sea of troubles? What they're doing, uh, the current president is getting retired generals now to run the friggin' prison system. This guy's name is Mark S. Inch, spelled I-N-C-H. Now, he's a retired two-star two general, selected, of course, by Jeff Sessions last month to run the Bureau of Prisons. Now, Inch is a retired army, and they say that all the... With his three decades in the military, they were spent mostly as a police officer. Now, if you believe that, that a two-star general spent most of his time as a police officer, 
you don't know what mind control and twisted reporting is. I get back to text. The Federal Bureau of Prisons, uh, let's see, I, I'm just making some general statements. They say he would provide strong leadership, demand accountability, and transparency. And I believe he would be a general who has the ability to think outside the box, said federal prison consultant Jack Donson, who does not know inch but worked for the Bureau of Prisons more than two decades ago. In a statement after appointing inch, Sessions called the retired general uniquely qualified because of his policing background. Now, the Bureau, here we are right here, folks. They didn't do any background check. He was never uh, questioned. Now, the Bureau of Prisons that they're talking about has 187,000 inmates. It employs about 39,000 workers. They're spread out all over the place. Now, also, these people contract with not two or three or four, but 11 private prisons, which is as wrong as wrong can be. 11 private prisons. Outside the military, not much is known about Inch. Yeah, he's a mystery man. He's a ghost, especially among those who've worked in the federal prison system. Prisoner advocates and correctional officials, will Inch be an ally for better prison education? Will he limit the amount of time the prisoners are held in isolation? Huh. Inch hasn't said. Now listen to this next sentence. Prisoner advocacy groups have asked justice officials if any hearings will be held to examine Inch's backgrounds and priorities. They were told no. Inch is the latest of several former generals the Trump administration has chosen for top positions that have been historically manned by civilians. Now, it's so uh, I I'll have to I got to get through this thing. He's kind of a mystery man, kind of way out of the blue, said the spokesman at the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice declined a request with an interview with Lynch, so the Department of Justice can't interview Lynch. He's a mystery man. Now, this is the guy, just so you know. Remember when the little thing in Somalia happened, the American Correctional Association says, according to U.S. Army, as a major, he helped train and reestablish Somali police forces after a civil war during the United Nations operations in Somalia. Now, that was the battle where those guys got killed. They had the movie called Black Hawk Down. You guys might remember that. Now... That wasn't all of this guy. Task Force 435, military partnership with Afghanistan forces. He was the commanding general of that thing. He was the commanding, no, he wasn't a policeman. He was the commanding general of that task force. He was responsible for detainee operations and rule of law development. How did that work out, detainee operations, when this guy was around? Can you think of anything that went real nasty bad? Can you think of anybody who was ever put in prison themselves for things going sad, going bad, going, no, no, never happened. Many of the detention controversies that have dogged the military since the Iraq and Afghanistan war, now here it is, occurred before or he was named. All right, let's leave that alone, but uh, we want to keep an eye on this one here. You've got a whole bunch of military guys running the police, uh, excuse me, not the police, the prison system, and you have these kind of civilian quasi-prison operations. It's not good. Next, inmate charged with murder in Nebraska, prison uprising. Tecumseh, Nebraska, that's where they make the lawnmower uh, motors. Authorities have charged a man with killing a fellow inmate during a prison uprising in southeast Nebraska. The Nebraska Attorney General's Office said Tuesday night in a news release that 26-year-old Eric Ramos is charged with first-degree murder and related crimes. Ramos is scheduled to be arraigned Wednesday. His attorney didn't immediately return a call from the Associated Press. The Attorney General's office says Ramos killed 32-year-old Michael Galindo during the outbreak of violence March 2nd at the Tecumseh State Correctional Institution. Now, correctional institution, is that a jail? Is that a prison? Or is that a penitentiary? It's not doing much correcting here, is it? I can get back to text. The bodies of Galindo and 39-year-old Damone Fitzgerald were found after authorities restored order. No one has yet been charged with killing Fitzgerald. Authorities have said the uprising began because inmates were angry that prison staffers, now here comes the spin, folks, had confiscated 150 pounds of homemade alcohol from them. End of story. Now, when have you ever heard any liquid measurement being gone to his pound? 150 pounds, what? What's that? Two 10-gallon, two little 10-gallon trash cans of some pruno they made with stolen sugar? Two 10-gallon trash cans of some alcohol. Probably some homemade stuff. It says it does say homemade alcohol. 
they to make it that doesn't sound as good as 150 pounds and then bless her heart ap converts it to kilograms